Hey guys, what is up? It's Mr. Reality here with some more creepy tales for you. Tonight's chilling tales are from my homeland of Australia, the land of plenty. Australia has a reputation for all things creepy, but for these following individuals, creepiness is an understatement. So let's read. My mum and I moved into a completely normal house when I was about 15. Everything was fine and we loved it. One day, I was homesick from school and I was messing around on the computer when I heard our garage door open. I freaked out and went down the hall to get my mobile phone and saw the hallway door that connects to the garage opening. I panicked and yelled, get out. Two boys slammed the door and ran off. I started crying and called mum. I don't know why I didn't call the police first in hindsight but she told me to go next door to my neighbours and she was coming home from work. When she got home, she was speaking to my neighbour for a bit. The neighbour ended up telling us that she thought it was probably the young boy that lived in the house before us. Apparently, he sometimes goes around to everyone's houses and breaks in, eating their food and watching their TV and stuff. And for whatever reason, they were all okay with that. Apparently, he came from some sort of broken home, and they all felt sorry for him so they didn't call the police. But my mum and I were completely unsettled by that, and put new locks on all the doors that week. We didn't care if the other neighbours were okay with it. We weren't. A few months pass and nothing ever happens again. We figure he knows we're not cool with his weirdness and doesn't try to break in. A week or so later, I'm in bed asleep and I wake up in the middle of the night for no reason at all. I'm not hot or cold, I don't need a pee, I didn't have a nightmare, I just woke up. I had this incredibly uneasy and weird feeling wash over me, like I felt something or someone was watching over me and I completely freaked out. I went into my mum's room and slept in a bed that night. It kept happening a few nights and I thought I was just having nightmares, I was getting scared of the dark for some reason. I ended up sleeping in my mum's bed for about a week because I was so legit scared of the dark now. I finally worked up the courage to sleep in my own bed one night, but I could barely sleep. I felt totally uneasy and nervous. I managed to get to sleep for a bit, but then I woke up again. This time, I looked outside my window and I could swear I saw a face of someone standing there. Obviously, I noped the fuck out and ran back to my mum. One of the nights, I was back in her bed. We were all asleep and feeling fine when I wake up to my dog on the end of the bed growling. Now our dog is an old golden retriever and has never growled or barked at anything in its entire life. She is a huge wuss and completely placid. She has no problems with strangers, even if someone knocks on the door and comes in, she couldn't care less. So I wake up, all dazed, confused and half asleep. I hear the dog growling and I'm asking her, what's wrong? I look up and from the bed and I shit you not, there is a man standing in the doorway with a knife. I screamed like a banshee and the dog started barking at this point. Mum woke up and saw the man too. He went running down the hallway and out the back door. I'm crying my eyes out and the dog is barking her face off. Mum's running around frantically trying to call the police and an hour later they finally get there. Of course, the dude is gone. Morning comes and we go outside to see that the back gate had its lock cut with bolt cutters and the door leading into the house had been smashed in. How we didn't hear that amazes me. But as predicted, the cops come in, dust for prints and leave shit everywhere, but at the end of the day, they can't and don't do anything. We moved out that same day and went to live with my grandma and grandpa until we found a new house. Pretty much no one in the family believed us or thought we were just making it up for attention because my family are assholes. A few weeks later, we get a call from the police and they manage to match the prince to some teenager who just got arrested for breaking into another house down the street. It's the same guy that was breaking into all the houses in the neighbourhood and used to live in the house we were in. So mum's talking to the cops and some of the neighbours when someone suddenly tells us, completely casually, Oh yeah, that's that Malat kid. Wait. Did they just say Malat? Yeah, pretty much any Australian will know his name. Ivan Malat, the serial killer. 
his nephew was breaking into people's home, and our home, while we were sleeping, with a knife. And people were okay with that. So anyway, we moved into a new house and forgot all about that until a year ago. He and his friend murdered another teenager in the same fucking place his uncle dumped all of those bodies. What the fuck? So, the guy that broke into our house watched me while I was asleep and stood in our bedroom doorway with a knife while we were sleeping actually murdered another teenager a few years later. Mum and I nearly fell over when we heard about it. No one really believes us which pisses me off because it's in the fucking news. But it really happened and the police have it on record. Sometimes, when I think back on what could have happened if I slept in my own bed that night or if the dog didn't bark or if we never woke up, it really freaks me out. It's also left me with a huge fear of the dark. I get really uneasy if I have to go outside at night by myself or if I wake up in the middle of the night. Sometimes I have a panic attack at night when I go outside to put the bins out. So this incident happened to my mum before she had me about 20 years ago. She worked at a local pub and this pub mainly catered for fishermen as the town is on the coast of Western Australia. She knew most of the people who came in for a drink or a feed, but now and then, people from the town would come in as well. She told me that a bloke she knew from house parties around the place would come in and always pester her at work. She would normally brush him off and keep doing her thing until one night when she finished work around midnight and walked home which was a few kilometres away. She lived with a few housemates who were all blokes and they were all good mates. When she got home from a shift, she decided to have a shower. Making her way back to her room, she realised that her door was open which was normally shut. All the fellas were asleep so she blew it off as the wind or something. When she laid in bed to go to sleep, something didn't feel right and for reasons she couldn't explain, she felt the need to look under her bed. There was someone underneath her bed laying perfectly still. She stared at him for ages and realised it was the bloke from the pub. He didn't move nor breathe. At this point, she thought he was dead, so she left the room calmly and went to one of the guys to ask for some help. Mum's roommate jumped up and alerted the other guys, telling them someone had broken into Margot's room. They all came charging into Mum's room with baseball bats in hand. The bloke who she thought was dead was halfway out the window and managed to escape and run away. They called the police and like everyone in the house, including my mum, knew exactly who he was and where he lived, so the police didn't have any difficulty finding the man, who when was found, acted like he never left home. The bloke was charged $250 for breaking and entering and received a warning, but that was it. I had an experience in a backward as fuck community. It was one of the most terrifying times of my life and a great illustration of how horrible some communities can be. Real children of the corn shit. So I was visiting my family in an absolute shit tip of a town in 2005. I was uncomfortable from the outset. People would stare at you. I was spat at and when we ventured to the hotel one night, my girlfriend was actually felt up right in front of me by some menacing young guy with tattoos. We went straight home and the whole next day we hung out at my sister's place and my girlfriend got so bored that she even played the PS with me. The day after that was a lovely day and I put my foot down. Fuck it, we're going to enjoy this day, so we went out. We were maybe a kilometre from my sister's house when a bunch of kids fell in behind us about 30 metres back. They were laughing and having a jolly old time when I realised they were drinking. What I didn't realise though is that they were laughing at us until a beer can went flying past our heads. We sped up as I was getting worried, I turned toward the main town centre or whatever and started looking for police or at least an open shop to go into for help. I saw a hotel and we were basically running by the time we got to the hotel. I rapped on the locked door as I could see people inside but while I was doing this, our beer throwing friends were talking to people in two cars back down the street. The cars drove past and threw more beer at us, this time unopened glass stubbies. My girlfriend was struck on the jaw by a bottle from the first car and promptly fell to the ground. 
The second car nailed me in the back and got my girlfriend in the stomach with unopened cans. My fear turned to terror when I looked up to see a man in the hotel doorway. He had a bar and told us once in a tone that boomed with finality, you two can fuck right off. I moved towards him to ask for help or go inside the safety of the hotel, but I was struck across the face and another man punched me squarely in the head twice. I box, and I knew the hits meant business. I began to realise we were in big trouble. I got my girlfriend off the ground and helped her across the road to some dress shops and every shop was closed and locked, but the fact that people were inside watching us made my blood run cold. There were people at both ends of the street now. My girlfriend called the police. I put her beside some air conditioning units in a kind of alley that came off an arcade. No one was around and no one had seen us go in there. I sprinted out there with the intention of getting a car from my sisters. I made a call to my brother-in-law and he sounded frantic. I told him where my girlfriend was and he said he would go get her. But he told me not to go back to town. It was too late for me. I knew what was going on by now, as this third generation Iraqi immigrant Australian was going to be beaten by a mob for being brown. Despite my Middle Eastern roots, I play rugby, drink beer, back the bombers and bleed green and gold and I'm going to be flogged by these backward fucks. I don't recall the next 20 minutes, but I made it to the ER by myself. I guess I got in a fight or copped a beating or a combination of the two. I had a broken wrist, a concussion, and numerous stab wounds about an inch deep. Apparently, my concussion lasted over 20 hours while I was in hospital. Thankfully though, my wife was okay. This happened a year ago when I was working as a pizza deliverer. I often worked late at night, and despite other women being sexually harassed on the job every now and then, I never felt very nervous when delivering. Anyways, this happened at around 11pm. I was delivering to a house, and as I arrive I park out the front. Now there are two things you should know from here. The pizza is on the passenger side, and this is an Australian derelict suburb. So I get out of the car and immediately notice this 20 something year old guy standing on the opposite side of the road facing me. This being a derelict area, and with me being rushed, I thought nothing of it as it's not too uncommon to see derelicts hanging around the streets. But as I started walking around the car to the passenger side, I found him right behind me. He asked me what the time was and I said it was about 11. This still didn't have me on edge as I was used to this kind of stuff, but as I was opening the door to get the pizza, a jolt of suspicion came over me as I noticed he was still standing behind me, not saying anything. I quickly closed the passenger door, walked around to the driver's side, hopped in, locked the door, turned on the car and put it in drive. I felt like I was being overly cautious, but sure enough he pops around to my side of the car. At this point, I feel pretty safe, and dare I say, proud in my decision making, so I crack the window to get to the bottom of this. For the second time, the guy asks, do you have the time on you? So I told him again, it's 11 o'clock, followed by an awkward pause. Then he asks, can you give me a lift? I need to go to my friends, and it's where you're delivering. What? No? So he tells me, well I know whose pizza that is, it's my friends down the road, I'll show you where it is and you can give me a ride there. After several minutes of the same conversation with this guy, I eventually told him to get out of here and I'm calling the police. I closed the window and started dialing the number on my phone. As I was speaking to the dispatcher, this guy started yelling and banging on the window really hard. Thankfully. He eventually left and the police came and searched for him while I delivered the pizza. They never caught him, because who knows where he lives, but stuff like that happens every now and then, despite most of it being just immature sexual harassment. I thankfully learned to be alert whilst on the job. I don't know what he wanted, but I'm glad I didn't find out. About 12 years ago, when I was 16, I had just started seeing my significant other. Being young, in love, and the child of Catholic parents, I would sometimes organise to meet my SO in the middle of the night at a park halfway between my house and theirs. 
I would wait until everyone in the house had fallen asleep, then quietly climb out of my bedroom window and, with the help of some tunes, power walk through two suburbs to get to the park. I was on my way home after one such midnight tryst at about 3am when it started to rain. No matter, I was so high on life after spending the last few hours with my SO that this only lifted my spirits even more. Between the park and my house, there are about three kilometers of suburbs. The houses are nice, the gardens well groomed and the streets well lit, so all in all I used to feel fairly safe wandering around at night. However, the only road home went through a small valley with patches of brush on either side. I'm talking about the Australian kind of brush, or bush as we call it. Tall slender gum trees with bark hanging like sheets of skin and patches of deep inscrutable brush. The streetlight stopped at the top of each side of the valley, so the deepest stretch of road was only indirectly lit with dim light from above. Walking through the valley, I always had a little ball of apprehension fizzing away in my guts, but mind over matter, right? This night, however, because of the rain, I was jogging where I would usually walk, and I had my hoodie up and headphones in. It wasn't until it was too late to avoid taking the turn into the valley that I realised there was a figure standing in the middle of the footpath. The shock of it slowed me down and my mind started racing, shit, this is why you shouldn't be wandering around in the middle of the night, slash, calm your shit, it's probably just someone having a nice stroll, in the rain, in a suit. It was a man, wearing a dark, expensive looking three-piece suit. All he was holding was a brown leather bag, Slowly but surely, my brain is convincing my autonomic nervous system that there is something really, really wrong with this situation. It's three in the fucking morning. Why is he just standing there, in a suit, in the rain? Am I the only one seeing this? I was, but it's not the point. He doesn't seem to care about it. Why doesn't he have an umbrella? Why is he just watching me getting closer? It seems like he wants me or something. Shit, 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 you're too close. It's fine, just act normally. Keep jogging, keep jogging. I'm about six metres away when he raises his free hand to stop me. I never realised just how strong social norms were until that moment. I slowed down and stopped because that's what you do when someone asks you to, even when your whole being is screaming at you that something is not right, you idiot. As I pull out an earphone, he asks me in a soft, almost feminine voice, face utterly devoid of expression. Do you know a house with a blue front door? I haven't been in the area for a very long time. I need to find it. Sorry mate, I don't know any place like that. How do I get to the main road? The main road is that way. As we've been talking, my eyes have been slowly adjusting to the low light at the bottom of the valley. I'm looking at his face and there's something dripping out of his nose. There is blood dripping out of his nose and down his face. By this stage, I have that full-blown feeling of horror. You know the one you get when something is just nope? Alternating flushes of hot and cold and tingles in my hands and feet and my face. I mumbled an apology about needing to go, put my earphone back in and jogged away. I remember thinking to myself, don't let him know you're scared. Don't run too fast. Don't run like prey, all the while feeling his dead eyes following my progress up the hill. I didn't let myself look back until I had crested the hill and turned a corner. He was no longer there. I never did meet my SO in the middle of the night again, nor did I ever see the house with a blue door. So this happened a few months ago in winter, in Australia. I note this because I was wearing clothes suitable for a girl in winter weather, jeans, jacket and scarf. I was not dressed up like I usually would be clubbing, I wasn't showing any skin. I'm a 19 year old female and about 5'7 and while I like dressing up for clubbing, I am really skinny and feel the cold and had come from an exam. I went out clubbing in Melbourne with my girlfriends. We had just finished our last exams for university that afternoon and decided to go out and have a few drinks and dance in a club or two in celebration. After having some dinner, 
We went to a cocktail bar before heading to a popular local club just before happy hour ended. Now this club is predominantly a gay club, however, there is a straight section where a lot of people hang out. They play great music, $5 basics, and you don't get harassed by guys that much because you can grab a friend's hand and pretend you're gay. It's a really great atmosphere. When happy hour hit, we were taking advantage of the cheap drinks, double downing and having a great time. I only had two drinks, as I would have to drive home in a few hours from the train station. We caught trains in as it was much cheaper, living around an hour away from town. After my second drink, I noticed a guy a few couches away stealing glances at me when we weren't looking. I recognised him from my high school days. He was in the same grade as me at school but different classes, and I didn't know him. Now initially I wasn't worried. He was kinda cute, not a scary looking guy. He wasn't a big intimidating guy, more of a slim athletic build, the type of guy I would usually be into. He was sitting with some friends, a group of guys and girls, and he had great fashion taste. I was actually contemplating to myself whether he may be gay, being that sort of club looking so put together. He was wearing some tight grey jeans, a nice shiny button up and super high top shoes. I work for a fashion store in town which sells Supras and I have rarely seen guys with them as they aren't really current in trend here. He pulled off the look well and I was quite happy I had his attention. His group of friends in him were looking like any other group in the club, singing along to the bangers, having a great time drinking and dancing. Over the night, I noticed that he was looking at me a lot, even as my friends and I moved around the club. To the point though, Every Tom, Dick and Harry knew he was looking at me, even when I went up to the bartender to get my drinks. He was an older guy at the bar, who said, Looks like you have an admirer, looking really pointedly disapproving at this guy. It was amusing seeing this bald guy with massive stretches in his ears, looking so disapproving. The music was loud and I couldn't say much, so I shrugged it and tried not to let it bother my night. I also noticed he was drinking coke, which was really odd, but I just told myself he must be that group's designated driver. We didn't let it put a dampener on our night, but it was always in the back of my mind. My friends and I went to the bathroom, and he would be going to the bathroom as well. Obviously there were separate men's and women's toilets, but it still made me a bit concerned. Even the guy from the bar hung around in the background. At the time, I assumed he had noticed and he was watching out. Fast forward to me taking the train home. To my growing dismay, we had followed this guy and his group back to the train station and had boarded the train with them at opposite ends of the carriage. He was laughing and joking around with his friends on the walk to the station, but made eye contact a few times so he knew I was around. I was starting to grow uneasy, but I was with me friends and he was with his. I felt safe enough. That is, until the station before mine. My two friends got off the train to get a lift home from their parents. Creepy guy and his friends were still on the train, but there were a few people I recognised from the clubs, so this wasn't odd. It was the main train line from the city, and we approached my station. My stomach dropped as I noticed creepy guy say goodbye to his friends before waiting at the door to get off. I once again calmed myself down. After all, it did move before I made any motion that this was my stop too. To be on the safe side, I walked up the train to the next carriage and exited there so as to avoid attention. I had parked at the station at 1pm to get to my exam when the car park was full. My car was parked up the road with no street lights about 600 metres from the exit of the car park. I live in a smaller town and I've never once had a creepy encounter or felt scared walking to my car countless times before, even at times like then, early morning leaving the train with other drunk people. Tonight, I didn't feel the same. I walked quickly away from the train, feeling like someone was following me. Surely enough, it was the staring guy. I was so relieved when he walked up to a silver sedan and got in. I was just being paranoid. Even with him gone, I still felt as if someone was following me. Weird noises made me jump 
and I swear I heard footsteps. Assured that I couldn't see the sedan, I walked quicker, seeing my car in the distance. Reaching it, I managed to get my car key in the door when I felt a rough hand cover my mouth and my feet swept out underneath me. I screamed into the hand, trying to bite it and swung my legs, twisting my body, but he was too strong. I was being carried away from my car down the road. It was 2.30am and no one was around, but I didn't give up. I kept screaming into his hand, trying to get away. I freaked when I heard a car roar up right towards us with blinding white headlights. I was sure I was going to be thrown into the back to be whisked away to God knows where, but the man holding me dropped my legs back onto the bitumen. I wasn't expecting it, so I crumpled to the bitumen, hitting my head. With his hand away, I screamed to my heart's content, hoping someone would hear. I was disoriented and dizzy, and those white headlights were still blinding my vision as the car screeched to a stop. I was trying to crawl away down the road after being dropped, and my balance wasn't good enough to run as the door to the car opened. Get the fuck away from her. It was only at that point I considered the car was someone who could help me. I had crawled to the side and saw the car. It was the silver sedan. The creepy staring guy from the club and train was holding a torch like you see the American cops have like a weapon, and the man who tried to grab me was running down the street. From here, I could see a bald head and stretches in his ears. The guy from the bar, who I thought had been watching out for our group, he was actually running away clutching his arm. Later I found he tried to rush Staring Guy, and Staring Guy bashed his arm with the heavy torch, forcing him to run. As it turns out, Staring Creepy Guy wasn't actually a creeper. He had initially stared at me because he was into me. However, as the night wore on, he saw that the bartender was following my group around the room. When we went to the bathroom? Yeah. The guy who I thought was creeping after us was there to make sure that the real creep didn't do anything. When we were walking to the train, he saw that creep following us still and kept his eye on us. When we were getting off the train, he realised he had been staring and he knew he had made me feel uncomfortable. That's why he walked straight to his car. As he drove out, he saw the creep following me, creeping in between cars, so he raced out of the car park to get there pretty much as soon as I was grabbed. In the end, I had a very minor concussion. The police took statements from both of us and ended up talking to all our friends in order to find the guy. It wasn't hard, and he was caught. I was not told much, just that he was caught and had no prior record. I still have nightmares and I haven't gone clubbing again, but I have met a super sweet guy, and as awful as it is, we have an amazing how did you meet story. I was a tour guide and was doing my usual trip along the Stewart Highway. If you're not familiar with Australia, it is the longest and straightest highway in the world where you won't encounter a fellow soul on the road for hours. Civilization is so far away, you can't even use a phone as there is no phone reception. The only chance of communication is by CB radio if anyone is around to hear it. I was driving a tour group northwards and was staring at the horizon when I saw two dark dots briskly approaching. As I neared the dots, I could see a tall, lean man with his dog. He seemed in a hurry, but was averting his face. I slowed down to double check if the man was alright, but the man kept on walking, completely ignoring any of my attempts at providing help or assistance. There's a rule that we follow here on the Stuart Highway. Look out for one another. You keep other drivers informed if you spot trouble, such as roadkill or even animals feeding off it in the road. You offer a lift and maybe even treatment if someone is stranded. This is because you can actually die in the outback. When you find someone who can help you, that might often be your only chance if you've broken down and are not well prepared. I wanted to help the lone man, but I received no reply. Something was off about him. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but I had a bad feeling in my stomach. I was about to drive off, but the whole bus was protesting. 
He might be dehydrated and out of his mind. He might need help after all, but I had the interests of the group at heart and I couldn't justify taking a total stranger and possible weirdo. The tour group voiced their anger at this even louder, but I didn't relent. Once we arrived in town some hours later, I dropped off everyone and headed to the bar to catch up with some old mates who were expecting me. One of them arrived later than usual and seemed flustered and upset. Concerned, I asked him what was wrong. After much hesitation, he told me that he and his fellow officers had been investigating bloodshed in a small town nearby. Several people had been brutally butchered to death and the perpetrator was on the run. Even though they pretty much knew who he was, they couldn't locate him. It was like he disappeared into thin air. With a sudden intuition, I asked what he looked like and the following description sent chills up and down my spine. It perfectly described the man and the dog I had seen and tried to help. The police had been searching in the wrong direction all this time as he cleverly diverted them off his track. However, thanks to my tip, my mate was able to handcuff the armed murderer two hours later. I spent most of my summers in Australia helping out on my uncle's farm. In the family, it's just him, my female cousin who's never home because of ballet school, and my male cousin. My brother and I were there last summer when I was 14. I got up in the morning and walked into the kitchen, seeing a dude underneath the computer desk. He's just fixing the computer. He'll be done in an hour, my uncle told me. My brother and cousin went out surfing, while my uncle left me alone with this guy to pick up something from the store. I started getting weird vibes from this bloke. He kind of looks like the guy from Smash Mouth, but with a patchier beard and thinner hair. He keeps tinkering away at the computer and I slink down the hall. Because I want my privacy, I open my female cousin's bedroom door and walk in, put her music on softly, and leave silently after I slam the door shut. I then crept down the hall a little more into my male cousin's room and then roll under his bed and just start messaging back and forth with my boyfriend back home. I let the boyfriend know what was happening. I laughed it off because I'm inherently suspicious of any man or woman I don't know. We're making jokes about him flying down here and beating the repairman up but then I hear footsteps walking down the hall. It's like, uh, the toilet is right next to the computer and the only thing down here are the bedrooms. What did he want? I then hear my female cousin's door open. Since she has laminate floors, I can hear the man walking around in her room. Her bathroom door creaks open. Then I hear him leave the room he was definitely looking for something or someone. Then, my male cousin's door creaks open and he steps inside the room I'm currently hiding in. Thankfully, my cousin has a lot of shit under his bed so I wasn't found. This dude is muttering to himself as he opens the bathroom, the closet, then leaves again, walking around the house. I'm freaked out at this point, but it gets way worse. A car pulls up outside and it doesn't have the familiar sound of my uncle's truck. A phone rings and this dude picks up. No, I can't find her. I think she left or something. Followed by a pause. At this point, I'm freaking out and I furiously message my boyfriend thoroughly and utterly spooked unawares. Fine, but they're going to be back any minute. Move fast. I can't believe this is happening. People enter the freaking house. I couldn't tell how many footsteps, but I later learned it was two sets. I stupidly roll out from under the bed so I can grab the phone on my cousin's nightstand. I couldn't use mine because it's a Canadian phone and fuck roaming charges, you know? I'm about to dial 911 and then I get the moment of, oh fuck, I'm in a different country. What's the number for 911? So basically, I'm holding this pizza shaped phone going shit 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 when three dudes walk into the room. 
More repairmen, I asked them, trying very hard to play dumb. Right now, my boyfriend is messaging me like mad because I sent him, about to call 911. Might die. If I do, delete my internet history and haven't messaged back since. I'm holding a phone and look very pale and shaky, which isn't good because they know I know what they're up to. They just file into the room and I have never been more glad to hear. What the fuck are you doing? So my brother walks in, soaking wet, holding a surfboard, looking very menacing and these dudes are looking concerned as hell. They start making excuses and by the time their sorry asses are done trying to explain why they've trapped a very scared looking teenage girl in a bedroom, my overprotective uncle shows up holding a bag of milk and some frozen curly fries. He flips the shit and much beating ensues. Long story short, I almost got terrorised by three older men and they ended up leaving our house very sore. Unfortunately for my uncle, the computer was still broken. In the mid 80s, my mum was a cleaner. She would clean houses in suburban areas and would sometimes work in rural vineyard regions as we lived near both. For reference, this is in Australia. She would leave business cards at the local shops and get most of her business this way, and through some referrals and word of mouth. One day, she got a call from a lady who sounded like she was around 60, asking my mum to clean her old farmhouse. She made a lot of odd demands and mum would usually meet clients before taking on new business. In this case, the lady didn't want to meet mum and said she would leave keys under the front doormat. Mum agreed, mainly because the lady was quite obviously wealthy and was offering to pay mum substantially more than she would reasonably expect. Mum went to the house on a Monday morning and said she already felt unnerved by the long driveway. The house was essentially in the middle of a very large and very empty property. She found the keys and started cleaning. About an hour into the clean, she hears the back door shut. Mum was told no one would be at the house so she immediately felt unsafe. She stood frozen in the kitchen for what she said felt like three to four minutes, although she said it could have been much longer. There were no other cars on the property. She wanted to leave immediately, but had two rooms left to do. Both were bedrooms. She said as time passed and she heard nothing else, she decided that perhaps it was nothing, or perhaps something had fallen and it wasn't the door after all. She walked up the hallway and stepped into the bedroom. All over the bed were black and white photos. As mum got closer, she realised the photos were all of her. Some were taken at our family home and many others were taken at other houses mum would clean, some through windows or fences. She used the house phone to call the police and immediately drive to the end of the driveway. The lady ended up being investigated but continued to claim that it was a break-in. After some time, the police stopped with their searching and we ended up moving to a new city four months later. In 2008, I was living with my parents and sister in Brisbane, Australia at the time. I remember my dad had just gotten Foxtel, which is cable TV in Australia, but only the TV in the lounge room could use the cable box, and I really wanted to somehow get the cable in my room without paying $99 or whatever for a new box. So dad one day went out and bought a wireless AV transmitter receiver. It was basically a two-piece bit of hardware where you could plug this tiny box into the cable TV in the lounge room, and it would transmit a video signal to the receiver connected to the TV in my room. So one Saturday, I decided to connect it. My younger sister was the only person at home at the time, upstairs in a room, my room was downstairs. I opened the box and connected it up. At first, I was going back and forth, trying to get the cables right and trying to get the channel right, etc. But with no luck. Until I finally got something, I remember just sitting there and something started fuzzing in, which started to feel like a horror movie. 
I remember thinking, ah, oh, here we go, and waiting to see the picture come in clearly. As it started fuzzing in, I remember that this whole time, the cable set top box wasn't even turned on, and that's why it wasn't working this whole time. But then, why was I getting a signal? It seemed to all hit me at once. As I realised the box was off, the picture fuzzed in, and I saw a bed. I freaked the fuck out, as at first I thought it was my bed. I had recently seen Saw 2 and remembered the scene where she turns on the TV and it's a camera filming her in her apartment. That was the first thing I thought of. I sprinted upstairs to my sister, absolutely terrified, and told her to come down and take a look. She came down and we both realised, it wasn't my bed. We didn't know whose bed it was, or how I was getting the signal. Obviously, it was an AV receiver picking up a camera signal, but we were just so confused as to where it was coming from. Eventually, my parents came home, and we concluded that it would have to be a neighbour or someone living close by for us to be receiving the signal. We waited until around 6pm when someone came into the bedroom. My dad recognised it as one of the neighbours. We still didn't know what the camera was for, but we assumed it had something to do with fidelity. Either his wife, or he, had set it up to watch the other and see if they were cheating. Either this, or it was to take themselves having sex. We entertained the idea that he was a murderer and would film himself murdering people in his room, but just to freak each other out. We'd always make jokes about how one night we'll turn it on and it'll just be his face with clown makeup on staring at the camera waving, and then him walking out of the bedroom with a knife. Thankfully that never happened, but what did happen was still super creepy. We connected to the single for over a week, but after a few days the novelty kind of wore off. We felt a bit weird watching it and just resigned to the explanation that it was just to catch a cheating wife. That was until one day when we turned it on again and realised what he had discovered. Our neighbours were having a bunch of renovations done to their house. During weekdays they would be out and there would be workers at the place pretty much all day. It had been like this for over a month. We started watching the feed and saw a man walk into their room. It looked like it was the plumber that had been there regularly for the renovations. We didn't think anything of it until he started opening drawers. I called out to my mum, who was the only person home at the time, and we started watching it together. He started getting the wife's underpants and sniffing them, doing all that creepy shit. At first, we were like, oh my god, how embarrassing, he's being filmed. Will the neighbours see this somehow? But then what happened next was truly terrifying. He slowly walked over to the camera and looked right down the fucking lens. We were convinced that he knew we were watching. Mum immediately called Dad. I kept watching. He started fiddling with it and then put it back down. I told my mum that I don't think he knew he were watching, but he's definitely the guy that put the camera there. Dad came home and by this point, the plumber had left. Much to Mum's pleading, Dad went over to the neighbours to tell them what he saw. My mum wanted to completely stay out of it and was terrified, understandably. When he told the neighbours, they had no idea what he was talking about. They allowed Dad to go up to their room and what he found that was holding the camera was an installed device in the wall that was designed to monitor water usage which was completely normal at the time due to recent droughts and there were lots of water restrictions. The plumber had installed this into the wall, but fitted a camera behind it, in the wall to watch the bed. Immediately, the neighbours called the police, who came over and conducted a thorough investigation. For the next week or so, we didn't hear much about it. I spent most of the time just telling my friends, showing them pictures, but truthfully, my whole family was scared every night. It was just very creepy thinking that we could have had stuff like that hidden in our house. Chances are we didn't, but it was still really scary. 
A couple of weeks later, my mum was speaking to the wife next door and asked what happened with it all. The wife said the police found out he would come at nights, come to our street, sit in his car and watch them from his laptop. When mum told me this, I got the biggest shivers. The reason was, because on multiple nights, when I had driven home late from my girlfriend's house or walked home drunk after a night out, I remember seeing a station wagon with dark tinted windows always about 30 meters down the street from our house. It was never there during the day, always at night. I usually walked past it and looked at my reflection in the windows assuming no one was inside. I was always so confused by whose car it was but literally never thought it was anything. Thank you so much for listening guys and I really hope you enjoyed these stories. Which one was your favourite? Let me know in the comments below and if you liked the video, why not give it a thumbs up? And if you want to see more content, consider subscribing to the channel.